Mike Fontaine, Mike Marino, and Naomi Don are the makeup and hairstyling team that's been nominated for the Academy Awards, the Oscars, for the film The Batman. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. I want to kick things off by asking you all, what was the most interesting character to do the makeup or and or hairstyling of and we'll start with Naomi. Oh, I thought you might. <laughs> well, the two mics are obviously gonna say the penguin makeup and the penguin makeup, obviously they'll talk about that, but was pretty mind blowing. But you know, there were many makeups in that film apart from that that were sort of interesting. I think probably, you know, there was Catwoman, Zoe, that sort of grungy, hipster type makeup but things like the opening near the opening of the movie when we had the train gang and we did those halloween sort of waterproof halloween makeups in the dripping rain we did prosthetics underneath those white and black makeups and one of them had a bitten off ear one of them had scarring on his face they had rotten teeth they had tattoos there was sort of a lot going on yet it was quite simple and had quite a bit of a punch that, I think that was one of the most interesting ones, apart from Penguin, obviously. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the mics, do you want to answer? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. I guess it was the Penguin, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, that's basically what we did. Um, Naomi and uh, crew did the rest of everything else in the film. Um, we were responsible for Penguin and uh, the unnamed prisoner, which you get a glimpse of at the very end of the film which uh, we filmed a much more elaborate scene with that, uh, with that character. Uh, we filmed a much more elaborate scene and then they uh, took it out because I think they're doing something else with it later. Not sure, but, um, but the penguin, Colin Farrell. Yeah, that was what we did basically on the, uh, on the film, the bulk of what we did. And uh, I guess you agree, um, Mike Fontaine. Yeah, well, I came in and worked on the penguin uh, with Mike and the, the prosthetic renaissance team. And that was exciting because at first we weren't really sure what it was gonna be. I understood that Colin was cast. We, we've we worked with him before and we were excited about the project, but it could have been something like, you know, a nose tip and a monocle, like who, you know, who's to say we'd get to do um, the level that we got to go with it. Um, so it, it became very exciting when, we had the freedom to create such such an uh, interesting character. Mm. What was the biggest challenge each of you faced uh, on this on this on this uh, on this film? I think yeah, I know um, Nate, you had there, a lot of challenges. We had yeah, had you. That was <laughs> you were my biggest challenge. I was Get your Matt, favorite part of the whole Mike film. Marino was my biggest <laughs> bloody challenge. It was the best. Apart from we're, we're all we're old friends. <laughs> We've been working together for many, many years, Mike and I. That's right. Um, but there were lots of challenges. There were there were first of all, I forgot that Batman only comes out at night. So we were in the darkness for a year and a half. We had COVID. We won we hit we hit COVID a month into filming and we had to shut down for five months. And then when we were one of the first films to go back after the pandemic hit. And so they had all, the, all of that whole new COVID situation to deal with. And it was very, very complicated. It changed filmmaking forever, I would say, actually. But apart from that, we had a lot of characters. We had a lot of special effects makeups apart from obviously the Penguin. We had, um, we had a director who had very strong design ideas, which was very exciting to fulfill all of those. We had um, just actors who also had very strong ideas. So there was a lot of design work. There was a lot of, uh, not compromise, but we were working together very carefully to create a lot of characters. And, and it was very exciting. Then. But I think probably the biggest challenges were COVID and the length of time it took to make that film and maintaining that that enthusiasm which we did it, i mean we were all very enthusiastic about the film but a year and a half was a long time in the dark yeah i, I, yeah, I, I remember naomi 
Naomi had oh. armies of makeup artists there. You know, there were there were like airplane hangers of makeup artists and stations and everything that were uh, oh, yeah. filming yeah, in an oil kind of refinery. <laughs> I forgot about that? that. I had a huge crowd scene. I keep it's such a long time ago. We had massive crowd scenes. First, we had a huge Halloween scene with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of extras in full Halloween makeup. Thanks for the prompt, Mike, by the way. <laughs> then we had the whole flooding scene at the end where we had hundreds and hundreds of extras in water dragging them out, being rescued and being murdered. And that was the other big thing that a lot of people got killed and beaten up in that film. So there's a lot of <laughs> blood and effects and things like that going on. So there were a lot of challenges generally in the whole film. But I have to say, I think the end result is really exciting and it ended up being a fabulous film and partly for all of that, you know, going, going through all of those challenges and being able to create a really good film at the end of it was very satisfying. Well, and like, the film actually went on for so long. I think we took a three month break, you know, and then we, we came back to month. it all. We took a five month break. Five months. Then Batman, then Batman got COVID. And we had to shut down again. Yep. And um, and it, so that's how we we staggered on, and we just kept going. And but it was worth it. Right. You know, it was really worth it. There's some incredible images in that film, and it's a it's a really good ride. That film, I think. I watched it a couple of times again recently, and I really really enjoyed it. It was great to step back from the memory of making the film and just watch it objectively and see that it really was a really good film. So I'm really happy it, about it. It was a great movie. And uh, the interesting thing was during that time period, um, Colin, uh, number one, it was a huge challenge to begin with because, I mean, he completely changed his identity, um, completely changed his persona, his character, his, his eyebrows, his hair, his body, everything. That was number one challenge. The next challenge was that we took such a long break that he lost 30 pounds during filming. So by the time we went back to make sure everything was, you know, looking good, nothing fit anymore. So it looked like this, this, this deflated guy. So the whole makeup had to be re-sculpted during that time so that we can go back and film and make it look continuous because he, he lost so much weight. He was heavier in the beginning of filming, was losing a little bit of weight. And by the time we got to the break, he was i showed up at his uh, at his at his place to um re-life cast him and he was riding a bike he was riding a a, a a a exercise bike because you couldn't go out you couldn't go anywhere so all he was doing was working out so he kept losing more and more weight and uh it was a huge challenge because we had to basically redo what we started uh which was already successful and filmed and how do we, you know, make sure that it looks right again? You know, so that was the biggest challenge, I think, for us on the film. Mm. And then rebuilding all the fat suits. I mean, you're not yeah. supposed to say fat suits, but <laughs> his body shape. He's rebuilding that body shape. So the costumes worked with that, with a new shaped body. It was all, that was a huge yep. challenge. Mm. Absolutely. With many adaptations, yeah. we had to make sure that it was, um, you know, ready to go. <laughs> You know, it was, uh, it was, and we filmed in strange conditions. I mean, it was raining all the time. It was, we were in oil refineries. We it was were in, dark. It yeah. Was dark all the Everything time. was dark and, and wet cold. and waiting around. Yeah, it was crazy. And, you know, Matt Reeves, God bless him. I mean, he's an amazing director. I don't know how he did it, but he was wearing like a helmet and a parka and, you know, like goggles and it just, I don't know how he did that, but that was such a challenging time period of filmmaking in itself, you know, so. It was a very strange time when we entered the pandemic and went through it. It was really it, it was really difficult and strange and scary and everyone was worried about infections. We built a building for the makeup department. So That's right. I, during That's that five month lockdown, I kept thinking, what's going to make everyone feel safe? What's how the act is going to feel secure? So I designed this modular building and they built it. This huge, it was a hundred foot long on two floors and we were able to socially distance. We had private makeup rooms. For people yeah, that amazing. felt very nervous, 
I know people but, really felt nervous about coming back and then they were completely safe in this building. It was, it was an incredible thing that production did to build that. Yeah, it was great. And they had Matt, ventilation all quiet, and all these things in it. Quiet. <laughs> Matt's gone really quiet, Mike. Well, you, it's, it's an interesting conversation. Uh, <laughs> like, like Mike Fontaine, like with like tackling a character like the Penguin, where you are uh, like where there are expectations and it's a ca character we're familiar with. But at the same time, you wanted to do something new and different. How do you find the balance there? Well, the the style that Mike and I tend to uh, tend to do is is hyper realism, is bringing something into the world of uh, that that it could actually exist in in the real world. So um, we knew that it wasn't going to be uh, something in a fantasy world. We love Tim Burton and we love the Danny DeVito Penguin and all all of that, um, but. Yeah, Mike and I were really challenged with with bringing all these details and making everything feel justified in reality. So, um, you know, the the facial anatomy that Mike designed was based in uh, a real character. And then when we got to set and started doing the application, we zeroed in on things like um, little blood vessels and making the beard stubble actually three-dimensional in the light. So when the light hit it, you could see it wasn't just painted on. And, uh, you know, all these little things, we really had fun with all these details. And that's what allowed us to make it look like uh, as much of a real person as possible. So we were new, we knew we were going from that in the beginning. And and that's what we tried to do and, and push throughout the shooting. Mm, yeah. Right. And Colin is such a great actor, his expressions and everything really came through the makeup and that's really vital to a to a uh, makeup i mean if you look at the history of makeups you know something like uh you know nutty professor with rick baker or something like that you know you have great a, a well-known actor who's having to fight through these prosthetics and move around and colin was just an expert at knowing how to move his face around and really creating a new uh, way of moving, you know, basically fighting through something that's artificial, you know, so it's, it's really a, um, a tag team of, you know, collaboration with all of us, you know, detailing things and designing how it's going to look and how it's going to, how it's going to appear. And then it really relies on Colin to, um, to express how this character can really come to life, you know, so it's a really like, um, it's like being in a band, you know, and then coordinating with the filmmaking and timing it and then working it in with, you know, Naomi. And she was Naomi was just the best on that job. I mean, helping us. And uh, it's a very important to have collaboration between the makeup departments, too. And since her being the department head, I mean, it, she just made the whole process for us, which was an incredibly challenging thing to just go so smooth. So it's, it's vital to have a collaboration between all of our departments, even though we're both makeup, you know, it's just a real, um, it makes things so much easier and better, you know, so. And it's pretty cool, like, um, that this is one of the characters of the Oscars where you three can get nominated together with each other as a team and you have been nominated for the oscar and i believe if i if i'm correct uh mike i'd say this is your first uh oscar nomination mike marino mm -hmm. is your second oscar nomination and naomi don it's your third oscar nomination so you've each yes. got a slightly different <laughs> perspective on the oscar <laughs> nomination uh just just quickly with all of you how, how does that feel um and, and what does that mean I have to say that it's it's always it's incredibly exciting getting nominated for an Oscar. It's the highest award you can get. And we also got nominated for BAFTAs, so it's really, really exciting. But for me, it's it's a big deal for me because Mike and I have been working together for a long time. And we we first met on this tiny film, uh, Charlie Kaufman's film, Synecdoche, New York. And it was, he had six weeks to build this huge amount of makeup and and we went to the bake-off then and no one knew really who we were and we've and we've worked together several times since then so to be nominated with Mike Marino and Mike Fontaine who was starting out when we did Synecdoche was is a it's like so synchronistic it's a full circle and it makes me very very happy even though you drive me around the bend all the time <laughs> I'm very I'm 
I feel really happy to be with them in my yeah. life. You know, it, yeah, it's a great nomination for a very great film. I, I so felt the I'm, same I'm way, afraid. Naomi, that we all started, you know, in a sense, like I, my first movies that I worked on in New York when I was just starting was with Mike and Naomi. And they really showed me the ropes and were, were so welcoming and I learned so much from them. So it feels like a very cool full, full circle moment in that way. It's very special. Yeah. You've grown up into a man now. <laughs> and uh, but, uh, but Reno, um, we spoke last year and you were thrilled. What is it like the second time? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, you know, I'm so proud of the work we did. Uh, and I really love working with Colin and Matt Reeves. I mean, they're top notch i mean the best you can't really get better i mean it's uh it's great when everything is uh is is uh everyone's on the same page you know so that's that's really important a lot of the times we build things that um get missed or they get cut out or things like that but um it was really great they they saw colin in the makeup and wanted to film more they wanted to write more scenes they wanted to add him in more you know and that was really flattering um I I always taped, you know, this is how old I am. I always taped on VHS, you know, the Oscars every year, and I would tape the makeup award, and I would just put the tape in and be ready to record it, and then boom, record. And every year since, like, the late 80s, I've been recording the Oscars, you know, makeup award, uh, you know, my whole life. I have to find that tape somewhere, but that's floating around somewhere. Did you have, uh, a, favorite, it, 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 did you have a favorite winner, Mike? Like from ah, jeez, you know I uh, I'm a huge Rick Baker fan, you know. So um, Rick Baker winning, you know, he's won I think seven Academy Awards. I mean, like that was just like the best for me, you know, because I was such a geek. Um, but there were others too, you know, Greg Canham for Dracula, and you know, just um, Rob Bottin even winning in the visual effects category, which who's technically a makeup uh, artist, makeup designer. Um, but Rob Bottin was um, on Total Recall, was nominated in the visual effects department, which really just was a very, a, a, an amazing honor just for all of us because it's, at that point it took makeup and expanded it to this vis bigger visual necessity. Um, and that was really cool. You know, so I mean, I was, I've been a geek of the Academy Awards and all that uh, for many years. So it's oh, really so great cool. to be nominated. Ah, oh, um, and um, it must be nice, Mike and Naomi, for you not to be competing against each other at the Oscars this year, but to be nominated <laughs> together. Because last year you were both you were both nominated against each other. Um, two, two quick. I, I want to end on two quick things. Firstly, it, what do each of you think is the most special thing about this film, The Batman? What's the thing that you think is the most sort of special, magical to you? Um, and uh, oh, go go back to Naomi. What do you think? Well, I think that Matt Reeves had a really strong vision about the world that he was creating. And, and I think my, the Mikes and I were all, on, we were very much instinctively on the same page about the realism of this film. And, and it, it's sort of a series of layered worlds. And it's the world that the street world, the club world, the privileged world, and, and how they all come together. And, and so today reflects so much of society today. It's sort of weird. And, but I think that because Matt Reeves had really strong ideas and fantastic reference, it was his idea to have Batman, have that rock and roll sort of look to Batman. And we had those black eyes and saw the realism of the cow coming off and all of that. But I think creating all those characters in this world was really the most exciting thing for me. Mm, yeah. Uh, Mike Fontaine. You know, I think that, um, you know, we work on so many movies and there's so, there's so many times where, uh, you know, we, we always give it our all, but maybe some element is off, whether it's maybe it wasn't photographed quite right. Or as Mike mentioned earlier, like what we did got cut out of the film or the actor didn't fully inhabit the character. Uh, but this was one of the there are times when it, it kind of felt like the stars aligned and all of the elements really came together so beautifully and the way that you hope that film will actually you know really come together and, and create that full experience so I felt like 
we got to uh, be a part of something that worked on all of the levels that a movie's supposed to work on. And that was really unique. And, and um, that was, that's what made it really special for me. Oh, nice. And Mike Marino. Well, that film uh, um, is an interesting psychological film. Uh, what I took out of it, I think um, it goes into kind of a dark society and a dark city. And uh, Batman, I believe, is just discovering um, being hopeful, being an Avenger in kind of this dark world, you know, which I everyone seems to be consumed with, even the good people, you know. So I think it's a reflection on uh, what's happening today in some sense. And um and I think Batman really gives hope uh, and he's really discovering since it's early in the Batman years, I think that he's giving hope to um, uh, to the weak and to the meek and to all the people who get taken advantage of through the system. And I think that, um, uh, you know, it's like a beacon of light. I mean, it's a hope, you know, so I think as we get forward, you know, as we progress, I think it'll he'll develop his character even more. And I think it's a, a very important film even though it's a comic book film even though it's a you know fantasy film i think that it gives a lot of hope and i i think uh the message is pretty strong in the film and i think matt did a great job with that well i want to finish off because you got to you got to take on some iconic villains in this film um the riddler the uh, the penguin uh, Catwoman, who is uh, a villain uh, sometimes in some iteration, she sort of flirts the line between villain and hero, um, and and also a prisoner at the end of the film too. Is there a Batman villain that you guys would love the chance to do the makeup for that wasn't in the the Batman? Hmm, many, There's many. <laughs> What, I don't want to the... blow it. I don't, oh, I don't okay. blow it. No, no. <laughs> no, no, say something that is going to be in it, but is there one that just you guys love or, or do you, would you rather a no comment on that? I think a no comment on that one. <laughs> okay. So that might be... Yeah, I don't want to get in, I don't want to get in trouble. I, I okay. can say like five, but uh Yeah, there's many, uh, right? I, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean and I guess if you say one that is in one of the sequels, then that will be a like a, a spoiler. Like people think you're spoiling it. So no, no, no worries. Yeah, let, let's save it. Let's save it to the next interview. Let's. Save okay. it. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh, <fine. laughs> um, Mike, Mike, and Naomi, thanks so much for spending time with us today. <laughs> All the best of luck for the Oscars. People watching this interview can go to goldderby.com to make your awards predictions and get in on the discussion. And thanks for your time today. I've really enjoyed the chat. Thank, Thank you so, thanks much. so much. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Wow.